Hello, I'm Kevin Young from Moonlight Mantids, and we're doing another Q&A right now. Um, there's probably going to be a couple more after this. Um, I haven't gotten to these in a while, and these are the comments from YouTube, which are the ones that I take most often. So um, if you leave a comment or your questions on the YouTube comment section underneath the other videos, if I left something out, um, go ahead and leave me some more comments, and I'll mention you and your question. Uh, keep them coming. Thank you very much. Um, so let's jump in. Um, uh, uh, MOD for life. Uh, what can I feed my L1 cryptic mantids that hatched uh, as pinhead crickets and fruit flies are too big? Um, crypt cryptics are pretty small, uh, really spindly. Um, I find that uh, you can use uh, springtails. Um, uh, I you know fruit flies, uh, Malagaster fruit flies should work. It can be a little bit difficult for them to tackle. There is something that I use for um, for mantids that small, like little boxers, um, those tiny cryptics, brunners, and uh, they're pretty unknown. I might as well share something with you right now. Um, basically, they're called fungus gnats. I don't know if anyone in the mantid trade works with fungus gnats or does anything. Um, they're really easy to set up. Basically, if you buy uh, some uh, fertilizer, um, black topsoil, Usually uh, is the best thing. Uh, fungus gnats are like half the size of the melanogaster, so an even smaller feeder fly. They're a little hard to get started, and they're a little unpredictable. But they're the same little pest flies you see um, flying. Or that's why I have this plant here um, that fly around um, these potted plants in your home. Sometimes you find these really tiny flies. Those are fungus gnats. They're maggots um, live in this black topsoil or potting soil and they feed on uh, dead, dead decaying plant matter and um, they reach full they reach their full cycle in this in this soil so what you do is you um, get a bag of this uh, uh, topsoil and usually already in the bag it's seeded with these fungus gnats you can't really help but um, to, they can't really help but be infected with them and it's it's somewhat of a pest um, but if you don't have problems with pests and you're breeding mantids the fungus gnats are a really great uh, food source, um, a little, a little, probably a little, just as good as um, you know larger springtails or you know melanogasters. Um, you uh, just uh, just take uh, about a, uh, you know a few inches worth of this black topsoil. What you can do too is open the bag once you get it. You know they're like two bucks at Walmart or wherever you go or some you know your gardening center, and um, you just open this bag up, put it outside for a couple days, and the fungus gnats, if they're not already in there, they will be after a couple days. And what you're going to want to do is get a 32 ounce cup with a cloth lid. Uh, make sure that the this topsoil, this potting mix uh, that you want, you want like a black black topsoil is, is probably the best. You want actual potting soil. That's um, if it's if it's in those bags. Uh, sure, those are probably usually seeded with the fungus gnats, and fungus gnats occur naturally everywhere. And they're always they always seem to be a bit of a pest for uh, you know plant uh, you know people that are like into botanicals, botany, and all that. And uh, they have an issue with them, but we don't. I don't. I discovered them a couple years ago, and for the really small species, I use fungus gnats. So um, you just grab a, a 32 ounce cup, a couple inches of uh, substrate. I wish I had one sitting here to show you. Um, I do. One second. Alright, horrible video. I know I'm walking away and doing other stuff. But if you see here, well, I don't know if you can see that, all the little black spots. Some of that is soil, but uh, most of that is dried, dead fungus gnats. Thousands of them. And how did I make this culture? Um, the reason they died on the sides here is because it, it was too much uh, humidity in here. Um, I, was, uh, I was waiting to see if this one would produce flies, so I used a clear lid. And um, once it produced flies, I, uh, what, I, what I normally do is replace it with a cloth lid. And uh, the fungus gnats in here will reproduce using just this uh, soil here because the maggots eat the uh, decaying um, plant matter that uh, you know produces fungus and all that. And uh, the, the maggots complete their life cycle right here. The adults are, uh, they are um, like, they can fly, but uh, not real well. So they are going to get out and they're going to make a little bit of a mess. And you can put it in the fridge for like a minute um, to slow them down a little bit. And uh, you don't really want to feed from this cup. What you want to do is uh, you can put your uh, cryptics in here, about two or three per cup like this. And that usually produces enough of these fungus gnats to feed them. 
and I've actually stuck a ghost or um, a small cryptic or a couple boxers, you know, maybe like two cryptics in one of these with the cloth lid once they start producing, and um, they'll uh, they'll be on the top here. And actually, I've gotten them all the way to an L3 without ever opening this, watering it, or doing anything else. Once they start producing the fungus gnats in here, it's like a self-feeding uh, fruit fly culture kind of. Um, and a lot of people ask about that, like how can I put my mantis in my culture and, and do all, you don't want to do that, uh, they usually die when you put them in your fruit fly culture, um, the nymphs do. But um, with maybe a little bit of screening on the top, a cloth lid, um, you know like some fine tools, some fine mesh, and um, a cloth lid once they start producing, you want to keep this sealed. Um, you need to keep this very moist, not wet, and then the, uh, the fungus gnat larvae, the maggots, will, uh, will grow in here and then produce all these nice little flies, which if you leave this uh, clear lid on, um, it creates a lot of moisture as it gets warm because you want to keep it about room temperature. And then the flies are so small, the surface tension of the tiny droplets on the side actually causes them to drown. So if you put a, a cloth lid on the top, um, it'll stay uh, pretty well ventilated. Just make sure this stays moist. Um, I actually didn't have to moisten it, but I threw a ghost in one, a few boxers in one, a few cryptics in one, and a few other, uh, some brunners in one and what would happen is they would feed on the fungus gnats as they developed and I actually until these all these nymphs became about L3's never opened the container just put them in here cloth lid a little bit of tool so they can shed properly one of these was well started um, cloth lid for ventilation and this was already pretty moist so I didn't have to mess with it at all and in about uh, four weeks I had L3's I never opened it I just they produced the fungus gnats took off a little bit of a, a pest for uh, potted plants for most people, um, but if you do a little research on uh, fungus gnats, you just get some black topsoil, you put about that much in, make sure it's moist, and uh, for a little little species like uh, cryptic mantids, um, you know, that uh, the fungus gnats can be a real uh, real lifesaver. Um, other than that, you can use springtails or um, little isopods and things like that. Um, but I found the fungus gnats to be much more helpful as the adults kind of just stay around the top and fly around up here. Um, I don't want to say they're flightless, but they don't exactly fly real well. They more have this uh, sort of a, a propeller type motion. It, they're really, really uh, like sub. They're like, you know, they, they kind of fly, but they kind of don't. Don't know what you would call that, but uh, they're not real great flyers. So you do, you can tap them down a little bit, put them in the fridge for a few minutes, and then go ahead and put your, uh, your, your nymphs in here and uh, maybe slow them down. But uh, I don't mind losing a few of the flies because they produce uh, literally hundreds and hundreds. And uh, this one, I just I just set out, it's one of the first ones I, I set up um, this year, I think in January, and it's it's already raised a few nymphs all the way to capacity, and uh, because of the, the clear lid, when I'm not using it, they just seem to breed and breed and breed, and there's a few in here now, and uh, they just keep going because the, uh, the uh, organic matter decaying in here and the fungus, um, what the maggots eat, um, is just continuously, continuously keeping these going. So it really doesn't require anything but a uh, black topsoil. Uh, make sure that there are fungus gnats, fungus gnats present, and uh, that's all you really need. And these take off, and you just reuse them, reuse them, reuse them, keep them moist. And uh, I haven't even had to change these, so I just keep, uh, you know, uh, putting a nymph in, little little tool mesh, and a uh, cloth lid, um, just to make sure they can shed. They can shed from the cloth lid too, but you really want to add a little bit, a little bit of extra fine uh, tool or mesh on the um, between the lid and the and the top, which really helps out. And um, fungus gnats, kind of a new thing. Uh, I haven't made a video on it yet, so it's kind of a fungus gnat video right now, which um, maybe I should stop there and just, you know, that'll be, uh, that'll be it for fungus gnats. That's all you really need to know. It's pretty quick and easy. Um, and my videos are notoriously long, so let me try again um, with my Q&A. Um, but anyway, this is how you, uh, this is how you raise uh, fungus gnats for really small species kind of a new thing. Um, let me know if you guys try it and if you like it. I have not seen anyone else doing this at all, um, but uh, I've had a lot of success with it and it's, it's you know self-feeding culture, raise your L1s to L3s without ever opening this um, if you do it right. Um, you're, but it can help you get at least uh, those really tricky small nymphs, really tiny species nymphs to get to your uh, L2, L3 stage um, without a problem. And uh, you know they're much smaller than the Melangaster. Uh, much more slender, uh, sort of a pest um, to most people, but uh, I found use in them. Um, so I figured out a way to kind of culture them um, because they're pretty much anyone can do it, um, and fungus gnats are everywhere. I mean, I won't be selling these. <laughs>
and I don't think anyone else will either. Just get some black topsoil. If there's not already fungus gnats in the bag, little little tiny flies, um, then I'll leave it outside for a couple days, and there will be. Um, just make sure it's not like Miracle Grow, you know, potting soil. You want actual black topsoil, and um, from your from your gardening center and stuff. And uh, you can do a ton of these. Set them all up and like let them sit. Just let them sit. They're gonna continue their life cycle whether you're paying attention to them or not. And if you need them, you got them for the really small stuff. Um, and uh, so that's pretty much it for the uh, the fungus gnats. So thanks again, um, Mod for Life um, from the YouTube <laughs> um, comment section. Um, good question. Brings me to uh, to this little video here. I hope it was helpful. And um, just stay tuned for more videos. Okay, thanks. Bye.